Bloody stars. Don't, 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 do not, don't send me stars. Okay? I don't want any stars. Don't send me any stars. Now, interesting and fascinating discussion we're in for today. So, homeopathy is a fascinating thing. And I had a recent experience where I broke a toe a couple of times <laughs> in one instance. And uh, by the time I was going to bed, I was almost ready to go to the emergency ward first thing in the morning uh, to get it checked out because it was looking pretty bad. And that takes a lot for me. Because I'm one of those people that would be dying and still going, yep, I'm fine, yep, you know, that type of person. So for me to think about going to emergency, it's, it's a big thing for myself. So I'm there at night and I get a hold of this moment of clarity and thought and I go, you know what, actually, I'm going to try to act on some of these things that I know about or that I think that I know about. So with the help of a very dear friend, I get a hold of the frequency for Arnica which is the go-to in homeopathy for bruising, swelling, and pain in slight, to my understanding in general. I'm not a homeopathic practitioner in any capacity. Um, this is just the brief run through of what she gave me as a description of why they use it in that particular direction. Those three things, pain, swelling, and bruising. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll check it out. Except um, I don't have Arnica, and I don't have homeopathy, so I didn't have anyone near me. This is somebody uh, quite literally on the opposite side of the state. So I'm sitting there thinking about it, and then we decided that we would try to hunt down the frequency for it, because I do have a couple of frequency-based uh, technologies that are interesting and have interesting effects. So I thought, excellent, this is a, a real-world application of this sort of stuff. Let's, uh, let's have a play, shall we? And so we tracked down Arnica, which is measured at approximately, or more specifically, <laughs> 1042 hertz. Okay. It's, now, that I find very interesting because uh, we can hear that. However, still, I was like, okay, well, you know, this is. A frequency. I have something to put the frequency. The thing that I put my frequency through was uh, this little baby right here, commonly called a harmonizer. It's a combination of um, newer technologies. If you don't know about Organite, do your research on um, stealth stealth fighter jets. Uh, they use that sort of thing to hide from radar detection. Um, the copper stuff in here is specifically measured at points and uh, scales and measurements that hit particular what we would call keynote frequencies in our reality in order to be able to enact a ringing bell type of effect, which then creates a somatic phenomenon in what we call physical matter to restructure and reorganize our reality. Perfect. Restructure, reorganize reality with a particular frequency. And I'm sitting there going, actually, I can visualize this. I've got my foot on the plate with a really bad sock at the moment, so ignore that. I've got my foot on the metal plate, and the vibration underneath the plate is going like this, except there's no plate and there's no sand on the plate because it's my foot and I'm asleep in bed. And this is just underneath my mattress, underneath the bed, like that, playing this frequency. Okay. So while there was no actual vibrating plate, the phenomenon and the explanation can be said to be exactly the same. That is to say, this frequency being projected through the harmonizer was causing a reshuffling or a realigning, a re coordinating of my molecular, submolecular, atomic, subatomic capacities, and potentially even smaller than that, um, into what we would say a more harmonic and trained pattern to the frequency that I'm putting through here, which happens to be 142 hertz. The effect in the morning, I woke up and I went, well, I don't even know why I was going to think about going to the hospital. Uh, that thing is clearly fucking magical, <laughs> was my um, experience of it the morning after. 
So within the span of about, pff, I don't know, four or five days, it was mostly healed. Um, I happened to have rolled my same ankle today, earlier today, while I was out in the garden playing around. But uh, that's a different story. I'll get onto that later on tonight. But what I wanted to talk about, because it came in so apparently clearly to me, was how obvious this is. I took an ingredient of a medicine that is, quote, pseudoscience, due to the fact that it can't be proven using what we refer to as physical mainstream sciences. Chemistry, physics, um, biology, all these guys out there, they laugh at homeopathy because of this thing called Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is a certain percentage or scale when you're talking about ingredients that when you get down too far, they say that you can't find any more ingredients of that substance left within the material, and so it doesn't exist anymore. Right? Get that. Something when you keep going down to a certain point stops existing, but if you keep going beyond that, there's nothing more. That doesn't make that much sense to me. So let's have a look, shall we? The basic idea of homeopathy is this. You take dilutions and you create successions out of the dilutions. A lot of the time these are measured in X's and C's. X's are multiples of 10 and C's are in multiples of 100. So you might have a dilution that says X10 and that means it's been succeeded 10 times from the original dilution. Or C200, which might mean 200 times removed from the original solution. Now each step in the removal of a solution is you take the substance, you take a, um, uh, a tincture of something, um, take anything, THC, whatever, CBD, take a tincture of that and then add 99 drops of alcohol to it, specifically, not bourbon or beer, um, and then take, sorry, after you've got your tincture, take another jar, and then with that, put in 99 drops of uh, alcohol, mix in one drop from the original tincture into that, and you've got your first succession. X1. Do that again, into a new jar, 99 drops of alcohol, and then take one drop out of this one, and put it into this one. That's X2. Take one drop out of this one into 99 more drops of alcohol. That's X3, X4, X5, etc., etc. Down to hundreds, C's. 100 times you've diluted this by one drop into 99. So every time you're diluting it, you're diluting it to a factor of 1 in 100. And then that is... Sorry, that's 1 in 100. I get those two mixed up. The X specifically means um, per 10 drops as opposed to per 100. So if you're doing the C's, it's 99 drops with one drop. If you're doing the X, it's 9 drops with one drop. Okay? And then that's removed again. So you can get 200 C's and they say that the best homeopathics exist or the strongest ones exist anywhere between 30 C and 200 C's. So this is one hundredth of a substance diluted by another, say, one hundred times. Okay? Hugely tiny numbers. Now, at this point in time, that's when our friends over in the mainstream physicals, or sorry, academia, you know, the guys with the stick up their ass, they love sitting there going, oh, well, you know, that's all very well and fine, except for the fact that at that point in time, at that scale, it's no longer considered physical matter. And they go, it doesn't exist anymore. That's because a lot of people out there seem to think that at a certain point, the universe stops. And this is due to bad mathematics in what we call standard models of physics around renormalization of numbers, which is eliminating infinite numbers in order to be able to shorten them to make themselves sound 
more proficient at what they do. Because if they came out in front of the entire world and were much more truthful about it all and said things like, well, we actually have no idea, we're just doing the best we can, they probably would not have been able to get enough funding for something like the Large Hadron Collider. Who's going to invest hundreds of billions, trillions, whatever it costs, dollars, on somebody going, yeah, yeah I can't explain it. Or I can't prove it. But if I take a number and I go whoosh, and then chop it up and move it around a bit and position it how I want, I can represent a really nice sales pitch with financial references that then real companies and real financiers can use. Hmm? Now, Avogadro's number is a very interesting one. I just not to say that Avogadro is an idiot or anything. He's marked a certain point in reality or a certain percentage of um, dilution or focused um, concentration that a lot of people are misinterpreting as the border between real and not real. Forgetting the fact that matter is yet to be proven as real. Matter can only be proven using what we call physical sciences, and yet nowadays it should be apparently clear to everybody who has any sort of scientific literate knowledge that matter is only proven by what we refer to energy as. And this is the reason why Einstein is very popular, is because he pointed out very simply and clearly that matter is exactly the same as, if not identical to, or interchangeably everywhere with energy and energy is that of matter right that's what an equals is it goes both ways energy is not matter and matter is not energy they're both right so what this means is quite simply that our friends who are out there promoting homeopathy as a failed physical science are forgetting about the fact that they're yet to prove their own science is successfully physical as nobody has yet captured a solid particle of point reference anywhere. Every single particle and every single thing that we've picked up and had a look at is a construction or an elaborate mixture of certain aspects or patterns and vibrations and frequencies. All of these things can be thrown into the loose category of the larger or more common term frequencies rather than just saying a frequency is how many horizontally versus the pitch, you know, trying to get into the mathematics of frequencies and that sort of thing. No, frequency can just mean waves. It can mean a pattern of ups and downs, but then that also makes it sound like a very 2D thing. And, and we know that we're not in 2D world. So when I'm speaking to you, I can say my voice is coming out like this, like a frequency, but that's incorrect because it's actually going all the way around me. It's a 3D sort of auric charge that comes out around me and these air pressures are then picked up as sound so sound isn't even something that can exist because it's a representative experience of what we call perception sound is in fact the phenomenon of airwaves interacting with what we call auditory devices or speakers ears eardrums that type of thing so sound isn't even real how can matter be real so anybody on that side of the fence can't turn around and point their finger at anything and say, that's not real. I'll be very loud and clear and say, none of it's fucking real. Excuse my Australian. Uh, what we would usually consider to be real, like uh, 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 that type of thing. Like if you're the person who goes, well, if you can't see it and feel it, well, then it's not real. Okay. Show me your thoughts. Where are you thinking? How are you thinking? What are you thinking right now? Show me where that's proven. You'll try to show me an EEG machine or a brain scan. Uh, no, that's an electrical pattern of representation. The interesting thing when you get into the AI is they're starting to bridge that gap, but using certain translation programs in order to be able to manipulate those frequencies into representative as in predefined measurements and interpretations, which then coincidentally pattern out human thoughts. So you've got these AI programs that can sort of map your brain waves and then show you what you're thinking. But that's because they've already been given a huge clue to begin with. There's still a huge divide between the electrical currents of your brainwave patterns and what we call the human experience of thought. 
very different worlds, hence the argument between brain and mind. Back to the point. When you start diluting homeopathy down to hundreds of a hundredth dilution, this is really pushing those boundaries of what we call our physical reality. One hundredth of a hundredth of the tiniest things is well and truly below what we would call provable using physical sciences. And I'm not going to suggest anybody out there is going to be able to prove that wrong or incorrect. I don't expect it to, but that's like trying to say that you can read an apple with um, a pen. You know, it's, it's completely erroneous. There's no context there that makes any sense. And it's a deliberate statement in order to be able to confuse people. Because like I said at the start, it's all energy. So you can't prove anything using material sciences. All that we can do is prove material sciences using energy. That's the way that we're going, and that's what we're doing here. So frequencies are phenomenal. They change physical reality, as I was talking about at the start of the video. What we're doing here, and the example that I'm using was my foot. Hey, Z. Was my foot, like a cymatic pattern. Okay, so I've got the frequency underneath my bed, and I'm healing my foot. And the foot is basically analogous to sand on an iron plate in the frequencies of the somatic patterns. So all of the atoms, all the molecules, all of the vitamins and minerals in my bones and everything else like that are going like this throughout the night. And they're being shuffled into a particular pattern that is the pattern of Arnica. Arnica is, again, 1042 hertz. It's commonly referred to as the healing in homeopathy for bruises, um, swelling, and pain. So using that, I was able to bring my physical body back into alignment, into entrainment with what we call health, which is a stable, repetitive pattern going back and forward without any sort of stress going off to the side or any, any rips or tears over here. I was able to heal myself using frequency. And that's basically what we do hmm, everywhere. Um, <laughs> voice, sound, emotion, music. So homeopathy is fantastic at pointing that out because it's a physical thing that they've gone, hey, look, we've got a physical thing here for you. But that physical thing that they give you, which is usually a little white pill, um, and it could be any size pill, it could be any color, they basically get really creative with them depending upon who you go for your supplier. These single little pills of frequency packets, and this is the cool part, the frequency packet, just like these guys do, get dropped down into a particular part of your reality, what, what I might like to refer to probably, and this is where we start getting speculative, especially because we can't prove any of this using physical sciences, as we'd already talked about beforehand. On the Planck scale, there seems to be a a new world that's coming out and this is what they're trying to find when they talk about the quantum world the quantum world is a um is a transitory zone but it seems like between the transitory zone there and where we are and this plank area of the universe it seems like the plank area is a very stable state just the same as our planets and suns are very stable but us here in this lifetime and our cells and all these bits and pieces, they're very seemingly transitory according to our experience. So it seems to be what happens is these little magic pills and the um, frequencies themselves get dropped down to a particular point in the field that goes boom from there out and it becomes a stable state pattern within that part of reality, then everything that is built on or below that part with a certain amount of fluidity is able to then entrain to that if it consents to. So you still have the ability to be hypochondriac and make yourself sick if you want and make sure that these things don't work just so you can prove a point. You're that amazing. However, if that's your goal, walk out the back door. We're not playing with those games here. What we're doing is we're playing with real reality in order to be able to discover things and have lots of fun. So have a look at homeopathy and frequencies and see what you can play with because 
at the base level at the base level what we're trying to do is to create repetitive patterns crystals in reality that are then reliably stand uponable yeah i like to make up words um how does one measure a current of energy current of energy yeah. Energy usually on our scale is measured in amps, but when you go up and down, that's also different uh, because of the different scales. So that's also to say that the current is amps. Energy itself could be considered to be anything. You could take any amount of matter and then put it back through the E equals MC squared in order to get the energetic representation of that physical matter. So a pen and a paper could be used. Um, uh, what are they called? A multimeter. You know, there's many different ways you can measure energy. Geiger, Geiger counters, they're really cool. Different types of radiation and that type of stuff. But once you start stepping out of our range above or stepping out below, that's where you start needing to reshuffle your concept because you're not going to find um, amps in your subatomic world, what you're going to find is a smaller version of that, like a fractal scale. So you've got, if we can paint it out and say we've got us here, then you've got your cells, and then you've got your atoms, and then your subatomic, what you've got are these keynote scales, like on a keyboard. So between these keys are going to be noise, because as we know in music scales, between stable parts, there's just potential or un differentiated or unspecified potentiation and then within these key notes you're going to find those particular forms of energy so we here we've got amps for the current below us we might have on the atomic level it might be referred to as the nuclear force that should throw a few sticks out there for some People who know what I'm referencing. Um, then on the subatomic, even less. Maybe even on the subatomic, that would still be the strong nuclear force. Going below that into the Planck scale, you'd probably be talking... I don't know. It's hard to say because they're still just mapping that sort of stuff out at the moment. So I'm not going to try to speculate much more than that because, uh, yeah, then I'll get people trying to pull me up on how I'm debunked or anything silly like that. This is to say, and we'll finish it off nicely as that famous Einstein quote that everybody likes to try to disprove, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. Now, that is not to say that I can take this pen and, and turn it into an apple, anyone who wants to get really technical, uh, but that statement is very apt for many places in reality, let alone the structure of what we call atoms, elements, and isotopes. So, have a look and check out your solfeggio frequencies, 1742583964175287. Five two nine six three. These are frequencies that have been carried through Gregorian chants in the Christian churches and the prior to Christian religions for a very long time. They're patterns that create beautiful dances in what we call physical matter in our area of reality. These beautiful dances are commonly referred to as good health whether that's good health in terms of the pumping of your blood around your system, your heart rate, and your respiratory system capacity, or whether that's good mental health in the form of confidence, self-assurance, and self-certainty. All right, friends and fam, love you all. Have a great day.